about. So then what is the basic principle of ultrasound imaging? So the basic principle is you emit the sound pulse. The length has to be, which is typically 1 to 5 microseconds, the length has to be a multiple of the cycle time. That's 1 over the frequency of the ultrasound that one produces. Why does it have to be a multiple? The duration of the ultrasound pulse have to be, has to be long enough so that it has a well-defined frequency. If it's too short, then it's the same thing as taking a hammer and knocking it on the table. Then you get the white spectrum, everything. But you want a defined frequency. Therefore, it has to have a finite length that's sufficiently long that it has a ca characterized frequency. So some kind of multiple of the frequency. What the multiple is is not so important for us just to understand the principle. Now, ultrasound frequency for ultrasound imaging is between 1 and 20 megahertz, typically. Not 20 kilohertz or 30 kilohertz. We're talking megahertz here. Still is ultrasound. Then the next thing that one does after one has emitted this sound pulse, one measures the time and intensity of echo. Many of you have done that before, certainly those who hike in the mountains, essentially. OK, ever heard of lightning? You see the lightning pulse, and then you count to know how far you're away you're from the lightning. There you're using the same thing to calculate the distance of where the lightning was. Um, you have the echo. In this case, it's not an echo. It's just the emitted sound. And that's principle what you're using when you hike. You have a known sound propagation velocity, C, and you can reconstruct then the location of where the echo was produced. OK, so those are, in essence, the three basic principles that underlie ultrasound imaging. I'm going to illustrate this here. So here we've got an object with two different mechanical properties. Here's the boundary. It's very abstract. Now I'm going to attach a transducer to it. The transducer. It's going to emit sound waves. It's going to be shown here by this little circle. And that's going to bounce off at this boundary here between this tissue and this tissue. The boundary is created just by different mechanical properties. What you do in the mountains, when you holler at a mountain, you've got the boundary between air and rock. And here we're going to have a boundary between two different tissue types. So the sound wave is emitted and comes back. and from the time and intensity of the echo, one can calculate the distance of the boundary from the probe. So this distance can be calculated. And the distance is very simple. It's speed times the time divided, uh, divided by 2. OK? The time is the time from the time that the pulse was emitted. That's item number 1, the sound pulse, until the echo is received. That's the time. The speed is the propagation, the sound propagation velocity. And we have the factor of 2, because the sound wave has to go into the tissue and come back, so it travels twice the distance. OK, so if you will, the, dis the total distance traveled is 2 times, but what we're interested in is this distance here. So it goes in and back, so that's why we have the factor 2. Now let's, give us, let's get some ideas on the sound propagation velocity. In air, it's 330 meters per second. So the lightning, three, three seconds later, it's a kilometer away. Convert that to units, that makes 0.33 millimeters per microsecond. In tissue, one has typically around 1.5 millimeters per microsecond. So it's about five times as fast. That means the sound travels one centimeter in seven microseconds. This typically increases with density of the tissue, rho. So in the bone, for example, the sound propagation velocity is 4 millimeters per microsecond. 